So about a year ago, I made a video making egg from mung bean. Essentially, I just made a mung bean omelet, and that's something that's actually kind of common around the world already. I originally got the idea from Just Egg because they use a mung bean protein isolate to make their very eggy scramble. Now this video came out really well. I really enjoyed the omelet that I made, but I've always wanted to upgrade this. I've always wanted to get closer to an actual scramble, a better plant-based scramble, just like Just Egg, but where you can make it yourself and you can control the flavors and ingredients. Finishing this though is not something that I've gotten around to. And luckily one of my friends on Instagram, Veggies From Mars, went ahead and tried to recreate it herself. She went online and found a few scientific papers explaining the process of extracting mung bean protein from whole mung beans. So today I'm gonna to follow some of the techniques that she used in her Instagram story and some of the techniques that I used here in this video. And we are going to create the absolute best plant-based scramble. We're gonna use some science. Okay, so to start off with this recipe, just like we did in the past, we're gonna be using a yellow split mung bean. Now this is a peeled split mung bean. This is already, it's all that's left is the inner part of the bean. That's what we want. That's where we're gonna get the protein to make this scrambled egg. I'm gonna use 200 grams of the mung bean and we're gonna drop that right into our blender. Now I have a high powered blender. If you don't have a high powered blender at home, I do recommend soaking these overnight. Now we're gonna weigh out 200 grams of water now I used filtered water from my fridge. It's all gonna work. And let's blend these up. I'm gonna blend them for about 60 seconds. Check it, it should be like a nice butter type of consistency. 60 seconds, these look, sh should look pretty good. So the next step is to increase the pH here to around eight or nine. Uh, we're gonna be using some baking soda and we want a one to 10 ratio of mung beans to water. So I'm gonna use around 1800 grams of water to about five grams of baking soda. That should increase our pH properly to separate the proteins. I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. Now I'm gonna add this directly into my blender. Hopefully have room in the blender, I think we do. So I'm just gonna put the top on and I'm gonna give it a very slow mix, the slowest speed that I have on here. I'm not trying to blend anything. Just wanna mix it all together. That's a pretty good mix at this point. So at this point, we need to agitate the mung bean water mixture for around a half an hour. You could stand and stir it. If you have any other stirring device, you could use that. I'm just gonna use my stand mixer with a whisk. So now all we need to do is just drop this guy, lock it up. We're gonna throw it on around the three and let this mix for around 30 minutes. Okay, this guy has been stirring away for about the last half hour or so. All of those proteins, fibers, and starches are all really nice mixed in with the water, very high pH water. So now, just like we did with the nut milks, we're gonna use our uh, filter bag, or if you have some cheesecloth, some cotton, whatever you have to filter it, we're gonna filter this mixture through, which is gonna probably remove some of the starches. We're only gonna do it a little bit at a time, just to make it easier. You'll see this squeezing out pretty fairly easy. Essentially, we've made a mung bean milk. So at this point, we have our mung bean liquid and our separated mung bean fibers. You can see these are very pale colored now. And all this is is just pretty much pure fiber and starch that came out of those mung beans. So right now, this liquid is quite cold. It's around 69 degrees. We wanna get this up to around 84 degrees. So I'm just gonna take this mixture here, throw it in the saucepan, and we're just gonna slowly bring that up to temperature. Once we get it up to temperature, we're gonna reweigh it and move on to the next step, which we ended up with about 1800 grams of liquid. So now we have to lower the pH to around 4.4. So we're gonna be using some distilled white vinegar. I'm gonna use three tablespoons of the distilled white vinegar to get down to that 4.4 pH. This should almost immediately precipitate and you will see the proteins coming to the surface and separating. Here at this point, this is where it's gonna take a little bit of time. We're gonna have to let this sit for a few hours before we remove some of the water. We want the proteins to separate and settle to the bottom of the bowl. Uh, once the proteins separate, you'll see a, a, a small amount of liquid on the top. Remove that liquid and you continue doing that. Keep allowing the proteins to settle, removing the liquid until you end up with a small amount. Move that to the refrigerator and let it sit at least overnight you'll see a lot of the protein separate. Now I've already done that. I've let a batch sit overnight. You can see here we had around 600 milliliters of the liquid and we end up with about 300 milliliters of proteins. So I'm gonna remove this liquid here on the top and I'm gonna do it as slow as I can to kind of like, I don't want any of the protein to mix up here. Okay, I feel pretty good with that. So at this point, we're down to about 300 milliliters of protein. So we're gonna dehydrate this. I wanna dehydrate it by about half. We still have too much water in this mixture. We're not gonna go down to a full powder. We're not gonna go down to a full dry. We just need more of a protein ratio. Let's go ahead and dehydrate this at your oven's lowest absolute setting for about four or five hours. 
While we were waiting for this to dehydrate, I actually redid my math, and it seems like we were closer to where we wanted to be in weight than I thought. So for this to work out a lot easier, I used nutrition facts on the back of Just Egg. We're gonna have just a hair more protein, which is probably gonna help us scramble because I don't believe that my protein isolate that I made here at home is as pure as the protein isolate that Just Egg is used. So I'm gonna kind of allow for a, a, a little bit of off balance here. So I actually dehydrated this down to around 272 grams, so we're just shy of where we wanted to be. So I'm just gonna have to add a little bit more water to this. But first, I'm gonna mix in the rest of the ingredients with the water before I bring it into this protein mixture because this is should be about 52 grams of protein and the rest with water. I'm hoping, hoping that's what it is. So to make up for the difference, we're adding about 35 grams of water. I'm gonna add 42 grams of an algae oil. Now you can use a canola oil or a coconut oil. So now we're gonna add some of our flavoring. There's not much. We're gonna add one gram or a little less than a quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder, eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric, and about a half of a teaspoon of black salt. Now you might have heard me talk about black salt in the past. I've used it in pretty much every egg video. Black salt, also known as kalamanak, is a, it's a very eggy tasting salt. It has almost like an expired egg kind of smell to it. So that's why you wanna be fairly light with it because if you go too far, it's gonna make your eggs taste bad, like they went bad. We just want it to go just enough to where you have a slight egg taste. That should be about what we need. About an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar. Now for some binders and emulsifiers, I'm gonna use a xanthan gum, quarter of a teaspoon or one gram of xanthan gum. This is gonna be a gum which is gonna thicken our egg, help it cook and stay together better. And a quarter teaspoon of soy lysothin. This is an emulsifier which is gonna help all of these ingredients mix together, stay together and hold together. Now Just Egg uses a transglutamate, which is essentially a meat glue. Now I don't have that here, you can order that. You can order there's a meat glue online, which is vegan. I'm actually gonna use methyl cellulose. Only gonna be using about a half of a gram, so an eighth of a teaspoon of methyl cellulose. It's not a protein binder, but it does bind things together tighter when it's heated, which is gonna work perfect in an egg. So I'm actually just gonna throw the top on this and just give it a light shake to kind of see if we can mix this stuff together or oils, fats, emulsifiers, everything. So this mixture has gotten very gummy, very, very gummy. We're gonna go ahead and add in our protein mixture here. Brings us to just about the right amount. It's looking good. I'm gonna give this a mix, kind of blend this all together. I will say this consistency is looking rather good. Just like Just Egg, I wanna give it a little bit of a shake and we're gonna cook this sucker up. I am excited. Okay, the pan is heated up. The Just Sauce Dash egg is mixed. Fingers crossed that we have the best vegan scramble. Now, the pan might be a little too hot, but it does seem to be scrambling. Whoa, holy, oh my. This is the best thing I've ever made. <laughs> Oh, this is scrambling like crazy. I mean, holy smokes. The sauce dash just egg. Now this comes out very much like your soft egg scramble. It's, I, I call it the Gordon Ramsay method where it's just all whipped up and it's, very, it's a very soft scrambled egg. But I will be honest, I will tell you that this, mm, this is the closest to an egg to a scrambled egg that you're gonna make at home. Wow. That's all I have to say is wow.